your soul to yours. This is the help you promised? That Sandoval promised? As Americans, we aren't here, remember? These soldiers are the best covert ops team our country has to offer. With their help, you won't need hundreds of soldiers. Hey everyone, and thanks for stopping by. This is Ghost Recon Wildlands, six things you need to know before you buy. If you're on the fence about picking up this game, this short list should help you make a decision. No need to wait though, let's get into it. Starting with number one, it's gorgeous. This may be the first thing you notice about the game, especially if you're lucky enough to be playing on the PC. The game's South American jungle environment is a perfect setting for showing off the thick vegetation, vast mountain and cliff sides, old stone main buildings built on the contrasting red clay soil, and all of this reacting wonderfully with the game's day night and weather systems. Textures are high quality and physical based models like people and vehicles are also top notch. And last but not least, it may have one of the longest load as an LOD level of detail systems I've ever seen in an open world game. Number two, if its graphics were the first thing you noticed, then its massive size won't take much longer to set in. The game's feeling of its size is bolstered by the load system mentioned before. This feature is best on display while flying a helicopter or airplane, where on the higher settings, of course, the load system extends terrain as far as the eye can see and in high detail, again, based on your settings. The game bolsters 20 different provinces. If you had access to the beta, you'll know just how large even one of these provinces can be. And maybe most impressively, you travel to all of them without a single load screen. If nothing else, a true technical feat in video games, even by today's standards. Number three, it's challenging. There is a difficulty setting in game, of course, but even on the regular difficulty, running into a situation without at least a little strategy will almost always earn yourself a quick death. Whether you're playing alone or with friends, you'll need to think things through and use all of your skills at your disposal if you want to be successful, which leads into my next point. Number four, this is not a stealth game, not in the typical sense anyway. Of course, staying unseen and using a quiet approach are helpful tools for accomplishing your goals. But while this is true, the game seems to promote the idea of accomplishing the task at hand quick, clean, and concise before the enemy knows what hit them versus the idea of being a shadow like in Ubisoft's other juggernaut series, Assassin's Creed. One example to prove my point is a major mechanic missing that is typical of almost all true stealth games, the ability to hide a body. There is technically a way to move someone, but it involves holding a person at gunpoint while they're still alive, so it's not very practical. This is the sense I personally got while playing, but you can let me know if you feel different. Number 5. Co-op is way more fun. This game is obviously team-based as you're constantly with three other ghosts while on your mission. Unfortunately, in single player, your team is basically useless. The AI is wanting at best while on their own and can be immersion breaking and the orders you can issue to the team never seem to make much of a difference. Besides using the sync feature to take down multiple enemies at once or while waiting for a revive, they don't seem to do much of anything. On the flip side, having even one friend to join up with makes actually planning out and executing a strategy incredibly fun, and you can tell this is how the game is meant to be played. So while a single player experience will suffice, convincing even one friend to join you is more than worth it. Ready to fire. That's a kill. And finally, number six, it's not the division. This is probably obvious at first, but what I mean is that Ubisoft seems to have learned their lesson from The Division and created something that at least in some ways corrects the previous formula and makes a much more fun, open-world, team-based shooter. Wildlands is by no means perfect and can get a little repetitive just like The Division, but it succeeds in making a much more immersive and fun team-based, and I'm emphasizing team-based, open-world shooter. So if you were hopeful for The Division, like myself, but were ultimately disappointed, I think there's enough to like about Ghost Recon Wildlands to fill the void that was left by all of you, Stay The there. Division hopefuls. Just make sure to bring a friend along for the ride.
That'll do it though. Thanks for watching. If you feel I've left out anything important in my short assessment, feel free to let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out. And hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Target smart. Standing by for go order. Roger. Target acquired. Got the target. Ready to fire. That's a kill. Firing.